you're probably tired of looking at your brown Bermuda grass lawn and you're just waiting for the time that it's going to start greening up. It's not time for it to grow yet, but there are several things that you can do now to help guarantee a better looking Bermuda lawn later in the season. The first thing you can do, if you haven't done it recently, go out and take a soil test. What a soil test will tell you is whether your pH needs to be adjusted, and it will tell you whether you need to add extra phosphorus and potassium to your soil. Now in our maintenance schedules for Bermuda grass, we have in there the spring and fall fertilizations to use a complete fertilizer, which has potassium and phosphorus in it. The reason you add extra by the soil test is that you need a reserve amount. Because you're removing clippings with each mowing, you're removing some of the potassium and phosphorus each time you do that. So you start off with a good amount in the soil, then add a little bit with this balanced fertilizer in the spring and fall to keep up your supply of potassium and phosphorus so you don't run out. Another thing that you can be doing, last fall you'd raise the height of your Bermuda grass mowing in order to give plenty of leaf surface so you had good strong root system going into the winter. This thick mass of leaves has given good insulation and protection from the winter cold. But in the springtime, you're going to be mowing your Bermuda at a much lower height, at an inch and a half. So what you need to do, you need to get rid of this dried up dead leaves and mow it down as close as you can. The lowest setting that you can, that you can get on your mower, which is usually about one inch. This will do several things. It gets rid of all this dead material so it's out of the way, so that when the green comes up and the leaves come up, you have a good, clean lawn without a lot of trash in there. This also will help reduce the buildup of thatch, which is the dead material and that can form a very heavy barrier between the soil and the air and the water. So by removing that, you can reduce the buildup of thatch. Also, at this point in time, it's time to put on your pre-emergence herbicide to prevent henbit, other crabgrass, other annual weeds that will be starting to germinate fairly soon. By mowing close, you can see the soil is exposed. You can get that pre-emergence herbicide right down to the soil where it needs to be in order to work. If you try and apply a pre-emergence to a heavy buildup of leaves like this, it will take a very long time for it to work its way down to the soil if it ever does and so you won't get as good control as you will by putting it on right after you've mowed closely. One point about mowing closely is don't do it all at once. You started off at three inches height last fall, come back down to an inch and a half, uh, to two and a half inches, two inches, one and a half, and then the final mowing of this one inch. If you try and do it all at once, your mower probably just will refuse to do it. You are taking off an incredible amount of dry material when you mow it down to an inch. So just do it in stages. Your lawnmower will like you a lot better for it, and you will too, because otherwise you will have to go very slowly. Even going down half an inch at a time, you'll have to go much slower than your normal pace in order to stop the machine from bogging down. Now, this is time to be putting on your pre-emergence for Bermuda. You're still early for getting on your first fertilization. You want to wait until about the beginning of May for that. So you'll need to use a separate pre-emergence application and fertilizer application. You want to get your pre-emergence on now because a pre-emergence herbicide will prevent those weed seeds from germinating. As soon as they've germinated, it has no effect on it whatsoever. So you need to get it on before any weeds have shown up or you're not going to get good control. Now if you have, if you have a few broadleaf weeds that have come through, you should have treated for them last fall with the 2,4-D plus MCPP application. If you didn't, or if you have a few spot treatments, you can come in now with the 2,4-D and MCPP and clean those up. But remember, next fall, that is the best time to do it. 
springtime application is only is not as effective. So next year, try and aim to do it correctly. Now, your tall fescue and cool season lawns, they have a bit of a different schedule because they have a different growth habit. Let's go over to our tall fescue lawn and go over some of the things that you need to be doing at this point in time for a cool season lawn. The cool season grasses, such as tall fescue, have a totally different growth pattern than the Bermuda grass that we were just looking at. Bermuda stays dormant in the winter, whereas our tall fescues will stay green through the winter and grow their best during the cooler seasons of the year when Bermuda actually is just sitting there being brown. Where, and Bermuda grows green and lush during the summer months when the tall fescue goes semi-dormant and doesn't really look its best. So you have to decide which you would rather have from different seasons of green in choosing a lawn grass. Many of, the, many of the operations that you use on a Bermuda grass lawn are the same as on a tall fescue lawn, but often done at different times of the year. Now to begin with, we just showed you how to, on your Bermuda grass lawn, to mow it very close at this time of year. Do not do that on a tall fescue lawn. Bermuda is dormant at this time of year. It doesn't matter if you cut all the top off. The tall fescue is still growing actively. You don't want to cut off more than a third of the height of any of the grasses while they're actively growing. So you do not want to cut the tall fescue off at one inch in height. That's not necessary and is detrimental to, the, to a tall fescue lawn. This is the time of year to be putting down a pre-emergence herbicide. Now the pre-emergence herbicide that we usually recommend that works best for both tall fescue and Bermuda grass lawn is Baylan. The chemical name of that is Benefin. So look for one or the other, either in the product or in the mix. However, where we are now, our tall fescue lawn is where we're growing our fruit trees. And Baylan's not registered for use in fruit trees. So in a situation like this, we have to be a little bit careful about what pre-emergence herbicide that we use. So in this situation, we're going to use Dactol, which is not as good a pre-emergence herbicide, but is labeled for use both in lawn and in fruit or a fruit orchard. If you do use Baylan in your lawn and you have just a single tree, fruit tree in your yard, try and Stop putting the, er, the pre-emergent herbicide on about twice the distance of the drip line out from the tree. That way you're, you'll be treating the area around the tree differently from your lawn and should have no problem. Our fertilizer program on the tall fescue runs different timing from Bermuda. This time in late March is time for the first good fertilizer of the year. It should be a complete fertilizer on the tall fescue, and it also coincides very well with the time of putting on the pre-emergence herbicide. So for our tall fescue, it will work very well to use a fertilizer in, in, uh, in pre-emergence mix. You can get them both put on at the same time, and that way, just in one operation, take care of everything that you need. If you have a tall fescue lawn and it's beginning to show some bare spots, spring is a good time to overseed the area with about three to four pounds of tall fescue seed in order to fill in some of the patches. The tall fescue grows as a clump grass. It doesn't spread like the Bermuda. So if you lose that individual tall fescue plant, the other plants cannot fill in. You need to put in some seed and get a new plant growing up in that area. If you do overseed, be careful about what pre-emergence herbicide you use because that pre-emergence will prevent the tall fescue seed from germinating just like it will prevent weed seeds from germinating. If you do overseed, use Tupersan as your pre-emergence herbicide. That will allow the tall fescue seed to germinate and to become established.